The crowd chants, shame, shame. The protest is directed at the government in Minsk, who they make responsible for the poverty, unemployment and heavy-handed policies, such as the notorious presidential decree number three. This policy is wrong. Where does our money disappear to? Down with the government. Dark times for this country. Our weapon is solidarity. Officials are parasites. The evening before the protest, we meet Svetlana in Brest on the Polish border. She doesn't want to say her last name. Svetlana suffers from severe arthritis and had to quit her job as a sales clerk. Now she's unemployed, an invalid and unable to take many of the few jobs available. The government labels her a parasite and threatens to impose penalties. Many are poor, many are hungry. Some even kill themselves because they're unemployed. And they're going to punish these people? Yes, I have a car. Am I supposed to sell it? Or sell my kid? or the sofa my daughter sleeps on. Yes, we've got a nice sofa, but we bought it long ago when I was working. Svetlana's husband is a truck driver and the family's sole provider. He's on the road a lot. Svetlana draws no state benefits, but she still faces the so-called parasite tax. She's calling for the decree to be abolished. Basta, it says, enough. We'll see what happens. It can't get any worse, so I'm not afraid. We're also tired of living in fear. We want change. The next day, a big surprise for the kiddies and everyone else. The city's quickly organized a free children's festival with loud music on Lenin Square, where the protest was set to take place. The demonstrators had coordinated the protest through social media and had no warning about the festival. I grew up in Brest and I've never seen a festival like this, especially not for free. And there's never been music like this. It's just to interfere with us. But they won't succeed. Yesterday, the authorities were prepared to talk. This morning, we'll have their answer. I suggest we march straight to City Hall peacefully without disrupting traffic. Who's with me? Once the demonstrators are on the move, others join them. In a few minutes, at least a thousand men and women, ordinary citizens, have come together. Svetlana hands out protest signs. Comrades, don't let the provocateurs get to you. What does it say? Something about slaves? That we're slaves. On TV they tell us how good things are. Then why do we have so many sick children? What kind of country is it when you have to take out a loan to give your child a proper education? The moment the crowds start to protest against the government, the police appear. But they get shouted down and withdraw virtually unheard of in Belarus, the demonstrators have always been hauled off to jail before their protest even ended. Inside City Hall, the mayor decides to speak to the demonstrators. Aren't you ashamed, some protesters shout, but others want dialogue and get it. For three hours, the citizens hear arguments why they should pay the additional tax. They accuse the government of trying to cover up disastrous economic policies at the expense of the poor. The mayor has no answer, also quite unprecedented. Are the protests outside and the dialogue in here signs of a political thaw? To me, it's common sense. A dialogue gives us an opportunity to gauge the mood among the people and perhaps to correct the government's course according to the majority's wishes. I don't know if I should believe them, but I'm hoping they heard us and realize we want neither revolution nor a war. If they haven't understood that, this will end badly. We'll see. Later, on their way home, five young men are arrested and held for five days. A political thaw looks very different. <laughs>